quarterback issues. That's not the story with the New York Dragon. Aaron Garcia, the top-rated QB this week. Also, we'll take you to Grand Rapids to see the winless Rampage. Their fans remain strong, but the opponent today is two. Tony Graziani takes his LA Avengers with a 2-2 two and two record into, Michi into Michigan. They look to get a winning streak started. And welcome to 30 Rock. Al Troutwick along with Glenn Parker, as always, get you set. Kick off just a few minutes away. Today, we're joined by Joey Galloway for the Dallas Cowboys for now. We'll talk about that at halftime. You're also a part owner of the Columbus Destroyers, but our question here today is, can you be as good as Tommy Maddox? Yeah. Can you be better than John Elway? Of course. Can you outpass Tony Graziani? <laughs> not outpass. <laughs> not even a quarterback. That's what it is. Because he's not a quarterback. That's why he's going to be so much better. It's about time you guys got an athlete in here. <laughs> oh, boy. What, what about me? Well, it's first I'm not quarterback we've had. Tomato oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's Glenn Parker's food world. We'll deal with that in another show, maybe not. Let's talk about building an AFL franchise as this team moves from Buffalo to Columbus. Tell me about your involvement. Well, I go to practice every day, and I'm trying to learn what it takes to win in this league. You know, I'm trying to learn from Chris Spielman, who's definitely involved a lot with this team. We've got Earl Bruce coaching the team. The fans have been great in Columbus. Now we've got to hold up our end of it, put a winning team out there. Well, let's take a little look through your eyes. Uh, with the Columbus Destroyers playing host to the Philadelphia Soul, who suddenly look like they're a player in the Arena Football League. But here are some of the key plays through the eyes of Joey Galloway as it unfolded last night in Columbus. You know, I feel like I'm taking a test every game as I'm watching these guys and say, okay, this guy's pretty good, and this guy's okay, but what's the difference? It's a different game. Number four is our guy. Number four is our guy. in the end. Philadelphia scores in the final 30 seconds. The Destroyers then fumble the kickoff. 43-41. The Soul 3-3. Three and three. Columbus 1-5. One, one other quick look game. Dallas a surprising 5-1 and one record and they crush Carolina 77-52. So I guess Joey Galloway late game management as it is in any sport can really hurt you in this league especially in the last minute when the clock stops all the time. Yeah we gotta play better in the second half as a whole. We got too many penalties. They're absolutely killing us. It's like we got to beat the penalties and the other team. We're not good enough to do that yet. I just like watching the evolution. As an owner, you're sitting there getting cheers going. You're worried about the penalties. Totally different than you as a player. Here you are as an owner, and I, I love seeing that. That's great. I have my nieces with me at the game, and, and they're down there. They're eating. They're not really paying attention who's winning. I need people around me to cheer our team on. Do you get as involved as John Elway? Are we going to see you making moves down onto the field to see if you can insert a play later or what? No, not yet, not yet. In a couple years, I'll learn more, maybe. Glenn, the two games on our schedule today, we're going to go to Tampa, we're going to go to Grand Rapids, Michigan. What do you think is the biggest story? I think the biggest story is the matchup between Don Vettis Franklin, the defensive specialist for the New York Dragons, against Freddie Solomon, the offensive specialist for the Tampa Bay Storm. These two players, very good. Both are, are having great seasons so far, and it's a matter, can Don Vettis keep his, uh, his uh, intensity level all the way through this game? And not make those dumb mistakes. Not make a dumb mistake. you got to take the good with the bad. All right, Joey, we'll be watching these games. You'll be doing updates with Glenn and I will get you set now for week six of the AFL on NBC. Kickoff coming up. Stay with us. The St. Pete Times Forum on Florida's West Coast where the defending AFL champion Tampa Bay Storm hosts the New York Dragons. The league's winning is coach Tim Markham, who's won seven AFL titles, matching up with New York's Todd Shell, last year's AFL Coach of the Year. And the quarterbacks, New York's Aaron Garcia, league leader in touchdown passes, off a nine TD game a week ago, and Pat O'Hara, who gets his first Tampa Bay start, one of the heroes of last year's Arena Bowl win, coming off the bench in that game. Tom Hammond, Pat Hayden, Lewis Johnson at the St. Pete Times Forum. And ready for the kickoff, New York has won the toss. They defer to the second half. So Tampa Bay will get the ball first. You had a look at T.T. Tolliver, the deep man for Tim Markham. And Todd Shell will have his defense on the field first as Gary Crawl is set to kick off. And we've mentioned that this is a scoring opportunity. 16 kickoff returns for touchdowns through five weeks of the AFL. Tolliver cleanly off the net. And Tolliver had a seam for a moment up the middle, then banged down about the 15-yard line, where Tampa Bay will begin with the football and Pat O'Hara under center. Harris Joseph made the special teams tackle. 
tackle. So the first start in Tampa Bay and the first start anywhere since 2002 for Pat O'Hara in his 10th year from that cradle of quarterbacks, <laughs> the University of Southern California. Well, they've had a couple pretty good ones in the last two years. Here's the Tampa Bay offense. David White and Warren Samuels had a sensational year. Good offensive line. And O'Hara's first pass way over the head of his offensive specialist, Freddie Solomon, and incomplete. New York defense lining up this way with Hutch, McGill, and Harris up front, putting the pressure on O'Hara. Filer Flowers, Dupree, Joseph, and Franklin. And Tim McGill, number 91, the big guy in the middle, had a great game last week. Really caused two exchange problems again for, for San Jose. So if you get that push up the middle, and it was the best entire defensive game by the New York team all season long, but McGill in particular was awfully strong. Huge win for the Dragons over previously unbeaten San Jose a week ago. O'Hara's pass incomplete. That one intended for Samuels. And O'Hara has been off target on his first two pass. You know, we were talking to Tim Markham yesterday about Pat O'Hara and asked him, you know, what, what do you like? Why'd you make the change? Well, first of all, you know, Shane Stafford threw three interceptions last week. All three were returned for touchdowns. You have a 10-year pro in O'Hara who's a calm guy, very collected, and, you know, respected leader. But guys who played with him over those 10 years, guys who played against them, actually started two Arena Bowl championship games when he was with Orlando against Tampa and beat Tim Markham's team once for a championship. On third and 10, O'Hara. Was that a diving catch? No, incomplete. Franklin matched up against Solomon, and the pass low. Solomon made a diving attempt. It'll be fourth down and 10. Yeah, and in this league, again, no punting. It looks like Tim Markham is going to be uh, making the call to, to attempt, uh, again, a 10-yard pass, at least a 10-yard pass to one of his wide receivers. Freddie Solomon, the offensive specialist, number 81, who missed that pass, has had a sensational year thus far. It leads the league in scoring. Right? Absolutely. 16 uh, scores, 14 of those on receptions, you know, 29 catches, and he's got 14 touchdown catches. He's the man in motion. Fourth down and 10. O'Hara looking for his first completion. Sends it downfield, and it is incomplete. And there is a stop on the first possession for the New York defense. Well, isn't that now five stops in a row for this New York defense when you consider the fourth quarter from uh, last weekend? So this defense in New York has been terrific. Some of it, though, was O'Hara just being off target. Yeah, and he wasn't rushed. You know, he came in last week off the bench, completed 65% of his passes, a little bit high. The last uh, four uh, passes there, a little bit high. So quarterbacks mean so much in this game. We've seen O'Hara misfire there. Meanwhile, Aaron Garcia has been on a roll. You know, we've watched him the last couple of years. He's just been absolutely sensational. Really been sensational for the 10 years of his entire career in the AFL. Aaron Garcia last week, you mentioned earlier, Tom, nine touchdown passes. But the, the staggering thing to me is his completion percentage. He throws a lot of deep balls, yet he completed 90% of his passes, 19 out of 21, those nine touchdowns, and five different receivers caught a touchdown pass. Now, when you have have wide receivers like he has that make catches like this. That's Wesley early in the game for a touchdown. Dupree, a remarkable catch in the back of the end zone. Fighting for position, Dupree again. Richmond Flowers with those strong hands we've talked about. You saved the best for last. Will Holder on the one-handed catch. So that's a good combination, Aaron Garcia and those great wide receivers. Now Pat O'Hara getting the start. Tim Markham might be second-guessing himself now after a uh, sort of a poor start to the game, but he does have credentials. Oh, absolutely credentials. Ten years in this league, uh, you mentioned out of USC. He's a very accomplished guy. Five arena bowl appearances, three titles. He's thrown a lot of touchdown passes. And we talked with Coach Markham yesterday, and what he likes about him is his calmness, his coolness. You know, he's like a coach. He helped install this offense. And what they need now is a quarterback that's not going to turn the ball over, and they think that's what they have in Pat O'Hara. Let's go down to the side then now and check in with Lewis Johnson. All right, Tom, thanks so much. Pat, four downs and out. Is that the rust from not taking all the snaps over the last several weeks? Uh, I just missed a couple throws that I normally make in my sleep, and I don't know why. So uh, I'm not overly worried about it. You know, we need to get out there. Hopefully we get a stop here and get back out there and, and uh, execute. So if this team has really struggled in the red zone offense, you haven't been able to score in the red zone. What have you guys been working on particularly to try and change that today? Well, we have a good system. It's just uh, the little things. Uh, and those are the things we worked on, just the little things. And, and when you start, when you're losing, you just need to execute the little things in practice and take it to the field. And hopefully that's what we'll do tonight. Okay, Pat, thanks. Okay. Tom. All right, Lewis and uh, Coach Mark.
Markham likes his coolness. Still pretty cool after missing his first four passes, turning the ball over. Well, you know, he's seen a lot of things in those 10 years. But you know, when Aaron Garcia is on the other sideline, you're going to, you can't afford too many stops. They were four and out. You know, two or three stops in this league is the difference usually in the game. So New York begins from the 14-yard line of Tampa Bay. Aaron Garcia, who threw nine touchdown passes against San Jose. Here's his first attempt of this game for the end zone too high. And Garcia misses Holder on his first try. Boy, had him. Had him wide open for the touch. New York's offense. Garcia, Filer, Flowers, Dupree, and Holder. And the pass protectors, Hutch, Steeple, and Harris. Did a great job of pass protecting for Aaron last week. Remember, a couple times Aaron last week had know, maybe 10 seconds to throw. And Richmond Flowers, number four, up at the top of the screen. Up there. This is the guy who's really developing as a real weapon for Aaron Ooh. Garcia. That emerging star. Garcia's second down pass. Plenty of time. End zone. Incomplete. Dupree could not hold on. He had it for a moment up in the air, but I don't think he came down with possession. At the top of the of the path, the top of the jump, he had the ball. And this is another guy, Lincoln Dupree, 17, who played beautifully last week. Sailing for the ball, give me a chance. Has it up there? Does he come down? No, he didn't have possession when he came down. Yeah, the ball hit uh, uh, Ordway's helmet, I think, yeah. uh, and it came down and popped out. Indeed. Actually, it was uh, Jermaine Jones defending. So Todd Shell now facing a third down. Pat Garvey's the uh, referee of today's officiating crew. I'm not sure what the holdup was, but he lines the clock. We're ready to go on third down. Dupree in motion. Flowers. 
his third touchdown catch of the season as the extra point by Carl is good. So given another chance on the fourth down penalty, Flowers on the receiving end of the Garcia touchdown pass. Yeah, he's in, he's the, it was the man in motion, they call it loop motion, L-O-O-P, as he goes all the way across the formation. Great pass protection again for Aaron Garcia. That's been a big difference the last two weeks, Tom. And then you see him scrambling. You know, hey, give me a chance. Throw it high and away. Gets that foot down. You know, Aaron Garcia threw the perfect spot. Richmond Flowers used those strong hands. And that's the first touchdown of the game. Dragons up by seven. Touchdown twins. Being 31st touchdown pass of the season has put New York on top 7-0. I want to tell Alex Ratwick in New York now, I'm now picking New York <laughs> to win it all. They play great defense. they got Aaron Garcia in New York, the best team in the league. They're going all the way. And they've got uh, Aaron Garcia some nice targets. And Carl kicks off off the iron of the net into the stands. Tolliver never had a chance to return that one. That's a touchback. So Pat O'Hara is still looking for his first completion and not under a whole lot of pressure, he just missed those four tosses. Some were high, some were low. Yep. Yeah, they were like, all over the place. Yeah, just like he told Lewis Johnson that, hey, those are passes that he generally makes in his sleep. When you have a quarterback throwing the ball a little bit high, maybe you give him a chance to get a little quick screen. Just get that first completion, get a little confidence built. Go! First down from the five. <laughs> Kalanoa, Ken Kalanoa, number 90. Just a pitch quick. Uh, just a pitch. Yeah. He beat the snap. Talking to Todd Shell, happy to have it. Defense number 90, the five yard penalty remains first down. In spite of the penalty, uh, Todd Shell is happy to have Ken Talanoa back. And he was saying to us yesterday that the combination of Talanoa and Tim McGill, who we saw in the first series in that nose tackle, is really going to make them a team that can put a lot of inside pressure on opposing quarterbacks. And that's so key because of all those three step drops. Now he's gotten into the center's head, too, hasn't he? Indeed. Advance the ball to the 10. There's a little short completion just to get O'Hara into some rhythm. And Josh White makes the tackle as we send you to New York in an update from Al Troutley. Tom and Pat, one of the things we admire most in sports is consistency from you guys. Meanwhile, the L.A. Avengers and the Grand Rapids Rampage, Chris Jackson back from injury. Yeah, back from injury. Off the down motion, that makes it very tough for the defensive specialists to get over and help. Great design run play. That's the story. First quarter there in Michigan. Back to you, Tom. All right, Al, you remember uh, Pat picked the Avengers at the start of the season. Well, that was, you allowed that to was about a half a dozen picks to go. Well, I, you know, you, I like uh, New Orleans, too. They look pretty good. Chicago. O'Hara oh, hits. As he delivers an incomplete pass, Ken Talanoa was there again and got some help from Jerry Sharp. Yeah, the old sumo wrestler Jeremy Jerry Sharp, number 69. Oh, Talanoa. Again, that in. Oh, wow. And I think Todd Shell's right. He, he's got his defense playing really, really well inside with Talanoa and McGill and Sharp. And remember when, when he turned the team around last year, Todd Shell came to the Dragons. They were 0-4. He started with the defense, got them playing well. And, you know, last week was their best game really since Todd Shell has been there. Go! A defensive. Ah, oh, here's quick toss, complete to midfield. It's caught by Freddie Solomon, his first catch of the day. It's 29th of the season. And Cosmo DiMatteo makes the tackle for New York. Yeah, Freddie Solomon, in his second year from South Carolina State, had, had a terrific rookie year. You see what he's done this year. You know, one touchdown every two times he touches the ball. I'd, give, I'd have him touch it a few times. <laughs> I mean, those are, well, those that, are good that, numbers. That's USC education here. You figured that out. Yeah, get him the ball. Yeah, about 106 passes last year. Go! Hi!
game for that. We, yeah. I'm glad you got it out of the way early. He's won a lot of, a lot of championships. I think Lewis Johnson's got a report on that. Yeah, guys, Tim Markham, you know, his big dilemma every Sunday is, is which championship ring to wear. He has so many of them. You know, 17 arena bowls, as you mentioned. He's been in 10 of them, 170. He has five rings there to look at his 79 Ranger Junior College Championship ring. He has a 90 Florida Gators SEC, first the SEC ring, and then he has these other arena bowl rings, 88, 92, 95, 96, hole three in the Miss Pastor by O'Hara. And on some of the rings, there have been some special inscriptions on one of them, uh, W-I-T-T-W, which stands for whatever it takes to win there. That is off the 96 championship ring. And then off the one this year, F-F-E-O, fight for each other. And these have been designed by Markham, and he's wearing that 2003 championship ring, the one that he won right here in this building last year. He loves his jewelry, guys. And when he won that game here, uh, Pat O'Hara came off the bench, threw a couple of touchdown passes, and rushed for one in the second half. To help Tampa Bay win a Bowl 17. Third down play in a crossing pattern. It's complete. Catch made by Saunders and tackled by Davidis Franklin. It's short of the first down. Yeah, terrific throw by Pat O'Hara and a nice tackle by Franklin. You know, you you mentioned you said good tackle. Davidis Franklin has been a sensational tackler the last three years in the Arena Football League. Last year he led the league in tackles. This year, I believe he's third in the league with tackles. And you know, ordinarily you say, hey, that's a bad sign if your safety is making all those tackles. But, you know, there's so much throwing in this game. You, you're going to be forced to make a lot of tackles because you're going to miss them. They're touchdowns. Solomon in motion. O'Hara, fourth down, pass. Wins it into the stands. And that's another stop for the New York defense. Well, he had Cliff Dell open early, but he was looking in the end zone. He had Dell open early for a first down. Two stops now. Six straight, two stops today, six straight for Todd Shell's defense. Give the defense a big hand. Todd Shell, a defensive player in his professional and college days, loves good defense. He's getting it today. Old Spice, stay in the zone. And by Bud Light, fresh, smooth, real, it's all here. New York Dragons leading, Aaron Garcia ready to go back on the field. And this week's Baby Ruth Offensive Player of the Week is New York Dragons quarterback Aaron Garcia. Each week we'll bring you the Baby Ruth Offensive Player of the Week. Now you would think nine touchdowns would set an AFL record, right? Absolutely wrong, wrong Tom. <laughs> One game a couple years ago, he threw 11 touchdown passes in a game. And twice have gone over 100 in a season. Tom, we can't remember, I can't forget, I should say, that last week Aaron Garcia threw those nine touchdowns on an ankle, but he told me it was about 70%. He was struggling with that severely left sprained ankle. He said the uh, trainers broke the record for the amount of tape and other stuff that they could use to immobilize it. Uh, before the game today, he told me that he's got less tape on it, he's a little bit more mobile, but he's only about 15% better, so that puts him at, what, 85%? And he's still able to play like he is. Tom? Yeah, Pat's good on the map. His math is impeccable. Very good, Lewis. Very good. DiMatteo in motion, running play. The give is to Josh White. And he's to the 20-yard line for a New York first down. As we send you to New York, and now Troutman. Tom, Grand Rapids trying to get their first win. Not going to be easy today. Anthony Buish, though. Josh Bush on the receiving end. Joey Galloway, it looks like he could run this play every single time. He was wide open. The corner has got to squeeze that down. Ingram has to be a little closer to give himself a chance to make a play. But they missed the extra point. Kicker. I'll tell you what, though, Pat. Grand Rapids is looking good from where we sit. Well, I'm, I'm thinking of finish second. They're going to be in the game, but probably lose in the, in the final now. <laughs> You got to be flexible in this game, right? What? Yeah. You've done that. Yeah, thank you. Go! Get on! Will Holder, the motion man. Flag stop the play. Eric Garcia pointing at Will Holder. Play game. 
on the offense. The break. Five yard penalty remains first down. First penalty against New York. Uh, Garcia couldn't get hold or wound up fast enough, could he? No, no. Play clock ran out. Well, you know, he really communicates with these receivers. A little while ago, he was talking to Will Holder. Oh, oh, oh. Will! Look at the clock! Look at the clock! Yeah, see, he, he's got to set him. He's in motion. He's right. got to, you know, time his motion to be able to get the ball snapped in time. Looks for Holder. Too high. Incomplete. Ordway defending. A lot of high balls. You know, some of the quarterbacks don't like this new ball. You know, it's a slick ball. They're all brand new balls for each game. And uh, we've seen a lot of high passes, which we don't ordinarily see. You know, Aaron Garcia, as we said, 90% completion percentage last week, which I find phenomenal considering how many deep balls he throws. Tim Markham was saying to us yesterday, he likes to throw the ball deep so much, we're going to force him to throw the ball short and then just try to play good goal line defense. Don't give him those long touchdown passes that Aaron likes to, likes to throw. Holder in motion, second down, Garcia locks it in traffic, and the catch is made by Corey Johnson with the defender wrapped all over him, Tremaine Jones finally brings him down. It was a gain of 16. You know, it was a nice loss, and a good catch by Corey Johnson, and we talked about Aaron Garcia having to work through a lot of different receivers. Corey Johnson, number 27, started this year as a defensive specialist. Now he's playing wide receiver them as well. And that play will end the first quarter from the St. Pete Times Forum in Tampa Bay. The defending AFL champion Tampa Bay Storm finding themselves on the short end of the score after one. At the end of the first quarter, the New York Dragons seven and the Tampa Bay Storm nothing. The AFL on NBC continues right after these messages from your local NBC station. The hottest place for drama is on NBC tonight. Two crime dramas back to back. It's a stroke of genius. Starting at 9, 8 central. The detective that can't be fooled. You beat the life out of her. All new Law and Order Criminal Intent. And Sunday's newest hit, All New Crossing Jordan. She's been dead 10, 12 hours. And Jordan's priest is the suspect. After all this, I'm not stopping now. All new Law and Order Criminal Intent. And then All New Crossing Jordan. NBC Tonight. The 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty. It's dependable, it's reliable, and now it's available on a car you actually want to drive. Introducing Mitsubishi's 10-year, 100,000-mile powertrain limited warranty. The coverage you want on the car you want. And right now, get no interest financing on any new 2004 Mitsubishi. Finally, reliability meets excitement. Only at your local Mitsubishi retailer. With Verizon Freedom for Business, the possibilities are unlimited. Because now, your business can make unlimited direct dial calls. Unlimited possibilities. For one low monthly price. Unlimited calling. So you can call as long and often as your business needs. Unlimited time. For local, regional, even domestic long distance, you're covered. Unlimited places. You can even add Verizon Business DSL. You really can say, just call 1-877-382-CALL. Anything's possible with Verizon Freedom for Business. So call 1-877-382-CALL. It's a very good move. Verizon. Make progress every day. Nothing but net. Mike up tonight. Todd Shell's AFL coaching career began in Arizona as the defensive coordinator where he won an Arena Bowl championship in 1994. He then became the first head coach in San Jose's history, leading the Sabercats to the playoffs three of his four seasons. After coaching in San Jose, Shell returned to Arizona as a television commentator before taking over the New York Dragons in week five last season and leading them to a division title and was voted the 2003 AFL Coach of the Year. And Coach Shell can hear us now. Coach, your defense has been outstanding the end of last game against uh, San Jose and to start this one against Tampa Bay. Yeah, you know, we've uh, we played pretty good. Uh, made a couple of mistakes that we got away with, but we put good pressure on the quarterback. That's the key. Give us an opportunity to make some plays back 
defensive backfield. Yeah, Todd, you mentioned uh, yesterday to us you're happy to have Ken Talanoa. Talanoa and McGill and Jerry Sharp in this first quarter have been very, put a lot of pressure on uh, Pat O'Hare. They did a good job inside. Well, that's where we felt like we could get some pressure up the middle. Uh, we just, you know, with Kenny and uh, McGill, that's a good one-two punch. And that opens some up some things up for Jerry and some of the guys on the outside. And uh, we just got to continue to keep after and play hard. Yeah, and what about your offense? You happy with the way things are going so far, Todd? Yeah, you know, they, uh, they they made some big plays. You know, they say, hey, that's a good defensive football team. Uh, you know, we're not going to, they're not going to give us anything. We're going to have to earn everything. We just got to continue to protect our quarterback and make some plays. Right, Todd, we'll be back with you later. Thanks a lot. Offside. It's offside. Did look like he was offside. A flag comes in late. So Shell's uh, also calling the game. <laughs> As he should, was a former <laughs> broadcaster, right? Won a couple of Super Bowls with the uh, San Francisco 49ers. That was the uh, first play of the second quarter. Only seven points scored in the first quarter. And we start the second with a flag. Illegal defense, number 44, linebacker out of the box. That's a five-yard penalty, automatic first down. The second of DC illegal defense, that one's on Niall Wyron, number 44, who plays a lot of different positions on defense for the Storm. He'll play defensive end, he'll play linebacker, then in this league you have to turn it over, he'll play some offensive tackle, he'll play some fullback. He's had a great year as a defensive pass rusher, three sacks thus far this year. When he left uh, Kansas State, he was the all-time sack leader at no. K-State. First down, Garcia's pass, quick talk, caught by Dupree, who races in for the touchdown. Say, Aaron Garcia is awfully good, but he is blessed with some really capable wide receivers as we shoot uh, you know, through the clip at the very top. And Lincoln Dupree, fifth touchdown catch of the year now. On just, I think it's 16 catches. So he gets the ball in the end, so real good block by the other wide receiver, Will Holder. You know, and they're still missing. Chris Anthony is a pretty good wide receiver right. for them as well. Injured. 14-yard touchdown, second of this day for Garcia. And the penalty stopped the extra point attempt. There's Lincoln, the AF2 Rookie of the Year in 2002. And in that year, he returned. Four start on the offense with 61. That penalty will be five-yard penalty. We play the try. He returned eight kicks for touchdowns in AF2, and he told us yesterday that today he was going to return a kick for a touchdown. Well, he hasn't gotten a chance yet. <laughs> Indeed, you're right, exactly. <laughs> he may, he may get a few today. I think uh, Tampa will score. Brawl, extra point, no good after the penalty. Yeah, look at Dupree is a strong guy. He, you know, he's 5'11", he's 190 pounds. He can break some tackles. You see he's got excellent speed. Picked up a pretty good block by Will Holder as well. This is what he had to say after that nice catch. Hey, they go out my legs all they want. They need to go out my heart. 14-yard <laughs> touchdown reception was all hard for Lincoln Dupree. Extra point missed. It's 13 zip. Over Tampa Bay just had a 14-yard touchdown reception by Lincoln Dupree from Aaron Garcia. Here's another look. His short pass, and then Dupree does all the work. Got a good block, and down the sideline for the touchdown. Meanwhile, Garcia was coaching young Richmond Flowers, one of his other receivers, on the play, and telling him what he needed him to do. Let me talk to you real quick. Hey, throw that one. Hey, because what you're doing, he's undercutting. You're killing him. So go here and then go back over the top of him. Okay. And then if he's running, then go to the corner. But give me more depth, all right? Garcia last year was the uh, offensive coordinator. coordinator for a while. You know, he, he's still passionate after all these years. Still working at it. You know, the, the win last week for Garcia, not only was, did it break a three-game slide, not only did it defeat San Jose for the first time, but it got his Dragons right back in the hunt for a playoff spot. Cross kick to oh. Oliver, who oh. is ran down by Richmond Flowers at the five-yard line. Boy, he's got strong hands, and he's got fast legs. And he's got heart, too, doesn't he? He's and fired he, up. He comes from a you know, whole family of great athletes. We talked about that in the past. His father, a great track star at the University of Tennessee. He actually ran some track at Duke when he was there. Now he's got it. You know, in this league, you just have to be a great athlete. There's this thing about, uh, you know, obesity in American state. This guy's got no body fat. Pretty rough. Zero. <laughs> Catch made by 
by Samuel, hit by Terrence Joseph. Terrence Joseph, number 23, had a big game last week. Well, he and on Dennis Frank with the two defensive specialists. These two guys just play on defense. The other six players on defense play both ways, but knocked a couple of balls away and was really critical at the end of the game in that win over San Jose. Joseph does a little modeling, doesn't he? But I don't know if I would bring it up to his face while you're out there on the field. Well, you're absolutely right. Good-looking guy. We talked to him yesterday. He modeled for InStyle oh, Magazine oh, and GQ oh. as well. He's got a nice portfolio. Oh. O'Hara hit. Oh. Wounded duck. Short of Tolliver and incomplete. I don't know, it might have been Richard Harris, number 84, who got his arms around Pat O'Hara. But this defensive line thus far for the Dragons have really handled the offensive line oh, of the Stars. Ah, that guy, yeah, was Hutch, was number 82. Hutch, yeah. You know, Anthony Hutch, number 82, is the, one of the better two-way players in this league. Uh, Hutch, number 82, he, you know, on offense, he can kind of keep people away from Aaron Garcia, block people out, and then on defense, that's where his real strength is, rushing the passer. Tampa Bay needs the first down desperately, and they get it on the short toss to the fumble. Fumble picked up by New York. It was uh, Lincoln Dupree, number 17, who picked it up, so that's three straight stops, right? Now, wait a minute. Uh, Are they saying no fumble? Well, I see Aaron Garcia coming on the field, but... Yes, it is a fumble recovery. Wow. Let's watch it again, Pat. It's... Definitely yeah, a fumble. He, yeah, he had possession. And, and Richmond uh, Dupree's picking it up. I think Flowers, did he deliver the hit that knocked it loose? Let's have a look. Yeah, you're right. Flowers right there. And then Dupree, number 17. So Richmond Flowers makes a stop on the kickoff return. He scores a touchdown. He makes catches. Then he causes the fumble. And New York has the ball back after another stop.
not a good time for a headache. The moment of choice, Tylenol or Advil? Advil liquid gels work faster, stronger, better than Tylenol on tough headaches. For faster headache relief, advance to Advil relief. So, what would you like? Mm, hair like yours, soft, smooth, flake free What's your secret? If you can believe it, I use Head & Shoulders. What? My father used that. Today's Head & Shoulders hydrating smooth and silky with twice as many moisturizers. You get flake free silky, smooth, touchably beautiful hair. <laughs> it's come a long way from my father's shampoo. Head & Shoulders, flake free and silky smooth. Surprise yourself. Hey, just curious. Is there a law saying that if you eat late, it has to be bad? No. Well, then why do people eat that when they can have a classic hamburger made fresh from Wendy's? You work for Wendy's? Well, unofficially. Off the clock. Okay, then. Wendy's pickup window is open till midnight or later. NBC Monday. Don't call me again. On an all-new Las Vegas. In the middle of all the glitz and glamour, a serial killer. He's getting a lot of state prison. Stalks one of their own. A great all-new Las Vegas, NBC Monday. 20 nothing, New York. Richmond Flowers, my nominee for Iron Man of the game, <laughs> the singing cowboy. Yeah. <laughs> this time we'll give you a little Janis Joplin. Busted flat, Baton Rouge, waiting for a train. With well, a feeling that was faded as my jeans. Bobby found a diesel down just before it rained. Wrote us all the way to New Orleans. New Orleans. New Orleans, baby. Well, anyway, this is Tampa, and we got to come out here and try to beat the storm. AFL. He can do it all. Yeah, he's doing his part. Called the singing cowboy. He was uh, with the Dallas Cowboys. Those are pretty good numbers. He's right back on special teams, right here. Charles kick, Tolliver. That's a live football. Guess you need to tackle. Richmond Flowers, first downfield. That's the last two kickoffs he's made a special teams tackle. I mean, well, what, what a valuable player he is. You know, offense, defense, specialty. That's what makes these guys, I think, such remarkable athletes. Now, this is a guy that didn't play any special teams at Duke. Didn't play any defense at Duke. And yet, here's a guy that's made a, you know, a stop that caused a fumble, right, in the last series. And he's made two special team tackles the last two kickoffs. And made a great touchdown catch, taking the ball yeah. away from Go the defender. Up. And now he's playing linebacker. Complete to Samuels. Close to the first down, tackled by Terrence Joseph. You know, he keeps up. I'm going to have to tell the Flowers family story again. Uh, that only takes about an hour and a half. <laughs> yeah, really. We don't have time for that, really. <laughs> Flowers getting the uh, defensive call from Todd Shell. That's another responsibility he has, is calling the defense. Flowers, despite his uh, inexperience defensively, no. makes the defensive call after getting it from his coach. Whoops, yeah, they're going to call that on Anthony Hutch. Hutch was, uh, he had dead aim on the quarterback before the ball even was snapped. Hutch was untouched, as they say. Day, by the way, they always say that. I never who they Two is. fouls on the play. Encroachment number 82 on the defense. That penalty will be declined. Personal foul, defense number 82. A 10 yard penalty, automatic first down. So Hutch was called for the personal foul as he hit Pat O'Hara. We talk about these guys being such great athletes. You know, Richmond Clark. This is the last series. On the, in the kickoff, he's the first guy down. Then he causes the fumble. The decree, and then just a couple of plays later, boom, back in the end zone touchdown. Arena League moment, they call that. Special teams, defense, and then offense. Remember uh, Garcia telling him on the Dupree touchdown catch yeah. that he wanted to give him a little more depth. Well, he gave him depth all the way to the back of the end zone and then took the ball away from Tom. Yeah, good point, Tom. He just said, you know, get a little bit more depth over that defender. The defender didn't try to come underneath him, which they did, but he just went over the top. Samuels makes the first down catch to the New York 15-yard line. Okay, Lawrence Samuels, number 22, has been doing it for a long, long time. In his 11th year, last year, though, was probably his best in his 10th year. 77 catches, 18 of those for touchdowns, and on defense, he had four interceptions, three and a half sacks, and one in an arena bowl game. He was 
Iron Man and MVP of Arena Bowl 17, his third Arena Bowl Go championship. Up. No one's ever done that, been Iron Man and Arena Bowl MVP. Harris pass, overshoots Cliff Dell incomplete. We'll take you back now to New York, another update from Al. Tom Tony Graziani's found Kevin Ingram for a second straight time. Meanwhile, he's had 28 touchdowns and zero interceptions on the year. And this one comes off of Grand Rapids' fourth turnover of the game, second fumble. It's not looking good if you're a Rampage fan. Not looking good at all. The Avengers leading 20 to six. Lots of time to go in the first half. Tom. All right, Al. Not looking good if you're a Tampa Bay fan either. Although they're starting to show a little sign of life here on this drive. It's been shut out once in the first half ever. Go! What? O'Hara, pass, caught, and there's a good catch in traffic. It's made by Spangles. Okay, that's a good throw by Pat O'Hara because Rodney Filer, number 34, was right in his lower body and so hard to get the steam on the ball that he did. Watch how he gets hit, and just as he's thrown by Filer in that left knee. But again, once again, the big target, Warren Samuels gets a 6'2", 200-pound body, screens the defender, you know, like a rebounder, makes himself even an even bigger target. Third down play, Go third down at a yard. And the running play with flags down goes to David White. He would have the first down if there is no penalty against Tampa Bay.
drive the car. Seriously, what do you do? Find Mr. Goodwrench at over 7,000 GM dealerships nationwide. License and registration, pal. What? Just kidding. That's nice. What is that, metal? My name is David Alexander. This time last year, I knew helicopters could fly. That's all I knew, period. And now I know this bird inside and out. The first time I actually flew, it was pretty exciting, pretty nerve-wracking. The instructor took off, flying along at a thousand feet, and then the instructor said, you have the controls. I was like, oh my god, I'm flying. And if you think that's cool, what do you see what I'm gonna do next? Fasten your seatbelts. See if David can handle it, only at GoArmy.com. Rejected by the beauty. The right girl for me is out there. This Monday, he gets to choose from women chosen by his average Joe buddies. I had some questions for you, but I can't seem to remember any of them. <laughs> and this time, he can't lose. Average Joe, Adam Returns, NBC Monday. Might do something for Tampa Bay to cheer about. They get on the scoreboard, and that chicken reminds me, that chicken sandwich that young man's enjoying reminds me that the Wendy's halftime report will be up next. We'll go back to the studio. Joey Galloway is with Glenn and Al in the studio. Joey very smooth through listening yeah, to him, I like him early today. And there'll also be a look at uh, New York Dragons quarterback Aaron Garcia. Always good copy. Ocho Loco. Yeah. Crazy eight. Okay, well, you think that guy's on the engine side? Eat the chicken. Well, yeah, it's rubber. not carbon, it's, it's rubber. It's that. <laughs> you have all that you want. <laughs> oh, you're getting slightly humorous. You are. <laughs> the rubber chicken circuit. Yeah. Black is ready to kick off, and Corey Johnson just flattened by White on the touchdown run. This is ready to return it. And takes it off without hitting the net. After he shakes three tackles, still going inside the 20-yard line. Tackle finally by Darian Connor on special teams. 39-yard return for Corey Johnson. You know, we were talking about Corey Johnson before the game, Tom, with that one year in 2001. He had, what, 326 yards in kickoff returns in 12, in 12 attempts. And it was against New York. It was with Carolina at the time. But can you imagine... 326 yards in kickoff return. Aaron Garcia now 5 of 10, 65 yards, three touchdowns. Three of his five completions Woo! have been for scores. Quick toss and not much there. A yard or so gained on the play. You know, we talked about your former spotter used to work up the booth with us, Mike Black. But, you know, in this game, the, the kicker has to make a lot of tackles generally. Generally, the kicker's going to be involved in some plays, some physical plays, but he's playing deep, deep safety, <laughs> Mike Black. <laughs> no one's going to get by him. Yeah, Tim Markham said, you know, we need our kickers to make plays. It's not really Mike's strong suit, you know, making tackles, but the all-time leading scorer as a kicker in AFL history. Grand Rapids is making it a game on a scale of 1 to 10, Joey Galloway. How's this catch from Sean Foreman? I give this catch a 10. Whoa! Great, great concentration. DB in his face, ball in the air. Great concentration, pulls it in for a touchdown. It's a 10, but it's a 7-point deficit they face right now as we go back to Tom Attack. All right, guys. Aaron Garcia driving the Dragons again down the field. He's going to send Will Holder in motion on this third down play. Before he can do it, Siren Brown came right across the line of scrimmage. Encroachment, defense, number 73, unabated pass to the quarterback. It's a five-yard penalty. Third down. You saw the look on 
Tim Markham faced last week in their loss. They had nine penalties, three turnovers, all of which were interceptions yeah, and were three. returned for touchdowns. That cost Stafford his job at quarterback. The uh, Pat Garvey, by the way, said third down, but it's actually a first down on the penalty. So first and goal, New York, from the Tampa Bay Six. Go! Stop! Garcia being chased, flag is down, and he's thrown it off the line. Off the ball, off the ball, at the interception. Interception, back to the 15-yard line. It's T.J. T.T. Tolliver. Tolliver with a heads-up play off the net. Now we'll check the penalties. And the, the net and bar is live on kickoffs and on pass plays. One of those unique things about the AFL. Seen a signal yet about the penalty? Holding on the offense, number 82. That penalty will be declined. It's over the first down. First down. Uh, Anthony Hutch, he had three defensive plans wow. penalties, and then a holding call there to begin the ball a little bit high. He had Will Holder early, but the rush. I think we're just trying to throw it away to you or no? Uh, it, yeah. Garcia may have really tried to throw that ball away. Somebody blew the whistle. Holding on you anyway. But he blew the whistle, so the play ended before, before I threw it.
Yeah, stuffed French toast down at IHOP. Yeah, right now at IHOP, it's stuffed French toast. Creamy on the inside and served with all your favorites. Everybody's packing in just to get a taste. IHOP, come hungry, leave happy.
about it so much, Tom, that you don't see a lot of running because you have three blockers when you hand the ball to fullback and five defenders. You know, those three defensive linemen and two linebackers, so the odds are against... Encroachment, defense number 15, violation of the second neutral zone. Five yards for penalty for fourth, half distance goal line, repeat third down. DiMatteo uh, on the penalty, so actually that was ideal for Tampa Bay. Uh, indeed. Cosmo DiMatteo, number 15, who had just had the penalty called against him. Two neutral zones in Arena League football, one at the line of scrimmage, one behind those uh, men in, in front of the linebackers. O'Hara with his eye on the clock and calls a timeout there, stopping the clock. Well, he hadn't stopped it yet. Now with 13 seconds. Perfect use of the last minute by Tim Markham. Now he just has to score. Indeed.
Tennessee and the Dragons will end the half with that run. They'll get the ball to start the second half. And let's go to Lewis. All right, Tom. Aaron, is something about the last week's win over San Jose that sparked this team that's carried into this game today? Yeah, I think so. I mean, we were playing better as a team. Um, we came out today, and it's the first time we really got out, the, out of the gate good. Um, we struggled here at the end of the half, so we got to go in at halftime, regroup, and get back on top. All right, Aaron, thanks. See you in the second half. Tom. All right, Lewis and Pat, the uh, New York defense setting the tone early here for the Dragons. Yeah, you know, those three stops uh, early on, uh, we were on camp today, which really did set the tone. They're one possession ahead, and remember, New York and Aaron Garcia get that ball to start the second half. Now time for the Wendy's Halftime Report. Let's go to Al Troutwig in our AFL studio in New York. This is the Wendy's AFL on NBC Halftime Report. Welcome to 30 Rock and the Wendy's Halftime Report. Al Troutwick along with Glenn Parker and Joey Galloway of the Dallas Cowboys. We'll talk about his status and the future of his NFL career. He's also a part owner of the Columbus Destroyers, so uh, welcome. Glad to be here. Now, as we talk about these two games we're watching today, Grand Rapids, L.A. and New York and Tampa Bay, both teams, uh, both leads looked like they were totally safe, and then late charges by Tampa Bay and Grand Rapids make them a game again. Every, you have to be careful when you say a game's over. We see it every week. This consistently happens. The team gets out, but all it takes is a stop on defense. You're back in the game. Joey, what's your thoughts on, uh, on Tampa Bay and New York so far? It really looked like New York was in complete control, but it doesn't seem as though Aaron Garcia is the usual Aaron Garcia. No, he doesn't look as sharp, and it's going to be a pretty good game. I'd stick around for the second half. and you know, First half, you're thinking, oh gosh, it's a blowout, and then here they come. The amazing thing about the New York Dragons is that going back to last week when they shut down the San Jose Sabercats in their last four possessions. They did it to Tampa Bay in the first three for seven straight stops. Here are the highlights. Let's show you what happened. Well, the Dragons are all about Aaron Garcia. Yeah, right off the bat, he finds Lincoln Dupree just on a little out, but the DB doesn't get over to help. It gets himself a touchdown right off the bat. Now, Tampa Bay's had some quarterback issues. Shane Stafford had three interceptions last week, so they go to Pat O'Hara, but that didn't really look that great early either, except here. Well, you know, Pat O'Hara, he's the wily old vet, been in the league 10 years. Just never found his stride early in the game. Overthrows, deflections, things like that. Never had his timing down. Came on strong at the end of the half. Joey, your former Dallas Cowboy teammate, Richmond Flowers, doing it on every way possible. Richmond's having a great game. He knows I'm in the studio today, so he's have a big one for me. All right. Take credit for him. I love that. It must have been something you said to him in practice one day, right? Yeah, I coached that guy. I, <laughs> I, I brought him to where he is today. Now he's all pumped up. The Dragons had a big lead, but Tampa Bay scores late 20-14 to 14 there. Garcia 7-13 of 13 for 73 yards, and most surprisingly an interception, but it was a deflected interception. Nonetheless, an interception. Yeah, you know, I think maybe getting hit as often as he does is going to take its toll on him. Maybe we're starting to see the results of all those big hits on him. Now, I look at Tim Markham, who's been to all these arena bowls. They showed all his rings. You had Bill Parcells. When a coach has proven that he can come in and win in all sorts of circumstances, and things look like they're going wrong, what does it do for a team? What does it do for you as a player to know that the man pushing the buttons knows what he's doing? You will absolutely run through a wall for a coach that you know knows what's going on on the sideline. You look to that guy, and if he looks confident and you know he's done this before, you listen to whatever it is he says. All right, the uh, Indiana situation, winless. We'll talk about their coaching change a little bit later. So far in Grand Rapids, the pressure has to be growing, 0-5. Meanwhile, the L.A. Avengers, only 2-2, two two, a team that was picked by many to go to the Arena Bowl. Tony Graziani watching Anthony Buich throw that long touchdown pass. Yeah, he finds Josh Bush wide open. The DB never squeezed this route. In the second quarter, of course, Anthony Buich has this pass deflected. It's picked off. This is Damon Wheeler who gets this one. Turnovers were the story in this game. Two fumbles, two picks by Grand Rapids. And, of course, Graziani always going to look to capitalize. Here he finds Ingram. And, and, and again, turnovers. Here we see a great job of catching the ball, looking to make some yards after the catch. Fumbles it, Avengers win it. That crushes the team, doesn't it, Joey? That's unfortunate to see that happen to an 0-5 team who's struggling to get some wins, struggling to make some plays, and they lay it on the ground. Yeah, and of course, Graziani right away, the very next play, goes for the throw, goes for the jugular, gets it, and hits Ingram for that touchdown. Grand Rapids' Jason Moore was stopped. Last second play, it looked like he was going to run the distance for a touchdown. He didn't. Graziani, 11 of 13, 145 yards, and he is amazing. 29 touchdowns without one interception. When we come back, Joey Galloway talks about his future. Stay with us. You're only as good as your next performance. Go! Touchdown! Look at the clock! Wendy 
Wendy's headquarters and they sent me a letter. Dear Mr. Wendy, that's me. Thanks for your kind words. Yes, Wendy's hamburgers are delicious because we make them fresh when you order them. And you're right, our classic double with cheese does rock, especially the combo. But to your self-appointed title of Mr. Wendy, unofficial spokesman, our lawyers insist that you cease and desist from representing us. Thank you. It's a uh, carpet speak for keep up the good work. Hey, you! Wendy's classic hamburgers. It's better here. Hey! He constantly gets 
nailed, thrown into the boards, bent over the boards. He is a tough guy. Joey, I was interested before we went on the air today talking, just, you know, having fun. Maybe one day you could play in this league after you've been in the NFL for 15 years. And you brought up the wall, like a major mind thing. Tell me about that. Yeah, I think I'd like to avoid the wall. I'll stay out of the arena. <laughs> you know, when I, when I watch these guys play, I have a lot of respect for them because they play the game. Regardless of where the wall is, they just go after it and smack the wall, get up and come back to the huddle. I don't want to hit the wall. Meanwhile, in enjoying this football today with you, it's amazing the passion that you have for, for the Destroyers as a team. I'm enjoying it. I'm learning as we go, and I'm excited about winning in Columbus. All right, that's Joey Galloway, Glenn Parker, and I will be carrying you through with all the updates in the second half. Enjoy the Arena Football League Week 6 here on NBC. This has been the Wendy's AFL on NBC Halftime Report. NBC Monday starts with the biggest all-new Fear Factor yet. And on the home new Las Vegas, an escaped murder is after one of their own. Then, Adam was the average Joe rejected by the beauty. Now he's back to choose from thousands of women who rode in. You're so handsome. <laughs> this time, he can't lose. Fear Factor, Las Vegas, and average Joe Adam returns. All-new NBC Monday. Do you have a great idea for a new product? Every year, literally billions of dollars are spent on products new to the market, and this could be your year. Advent Product Development can help. Advent Product Development specializes in marketing new ideas and inventions, and we're interested in talking to you. If your idea qualifies, we can patent the trademark it for you and take it to market. Or we can create a TV infomercial and sell your product directly to the public. Don't let your idea slip away. Call 800-36-INVENT now for your free inventor's kit. Call now. The 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty. It's dependable, it's reliable, and now it's available on a car you actually want to drive. Introducing Mitsubishi's 10-year, 100,000-mile powertrain limited warranty. The coverage you want on the car you want. And right now, get no interest financing on any new 2004 Mitsubishi. Finally, reliability meets excitement. Only at your local Mitsubishi retailer. Good morning. Any broadband connection can get your business online. But Verizon Business DSL can open the door to a new world. Where you'll discover self-managed email. It lets you set up and control your mailboxes right from your desktop. Remote dial-up access to keep you in touch. Even when you're out of the office. And Verizon Business DSL gives you the speed you need to get more done. Call 1-866-8767-DSL for a special rebate and more. Take your business to a whole new world. Call 1-866-8767-DSL for Verizon Business DSL today. Verizon. Make progress every day. Nothing but net. Mike up tonight. Ready to start the third quarter at the St. Pete Times Forum with the New York Dragons leading the Tampa Bay Storm 20 to 14. New York opened the game with three consecutive stops. They led 20 to nothing at one time, but Tampa Bay sort of recaptured that momentum, didn't they? Yeah, they really kind of worked their way back in. You know, pretty good defense, and then Pat O'Hara kind of led a couple of scoring drives that got them back in track. Now, what about our GM Goodwrench expert, expert advice? advice? I'm glad you... I love it when you call me an expert. Well, the three things I think that have to happen this second half, and first of all, Tampa Bay, although they ran the ball well, they need to improve that passing game. No passing touchdown. Remember, this is a passing league. Pat O'Hara got off to a slow start, but gains momentum after that. For the Dragons to improve that rush defense, they allowed two rushing touchdowns. This is the first one by Tampa Bay's White. They gave up a second one right before halftime, and then for the Dragons, regained their momentum. They were up 20 to nothing. But this was the second rushing touchdown they gave up. But remember, Aaron Garcia opens this half with a ball in his hands, a very hot quarterback, a 
again. And before the second half kick, let's check in with Lewis Johnson. All right, Tim, uh, Tom, I talked to Tim Markham a moment ago, and he said he can't figure out why his team is playing with no emotion. They're flat. He said they had a great week, looked good in the locker room. There was something about that stop that New York got him on, got him on the first offensive uh, series that seemed to let the air out of everything. Uh, he said right now what they've got to do is uh, stop New York on this possession. No touchdowns. they got to keep him off the board. And as for O'Hara, he says really the concern was that he was just off and not playing well, but he said what they did was shorten the game for him a bit. A lot of three step stuff and we'll see more of that here in the second half as O'Hara becomes a bit more comfortable. So, all right, Lewis. Garcia readying himself. He'll be on the field shortly after Black's kick to Dupree. Again, it does not reach the net. Dupree straight up the middle. And a cut back, kept his feet. Still on his feet. Dupree racing to the end goal. Touchdown. He guaranteed it. It took him two attempts. He guaranteed it to his yes. four different times and Mike Black, the kicker, looked like he was running away from him there for a moment. Missed him at the last time, but I want to say that's a strong run. A guy who returned for eight of them two years ago in AFL too. You know, hand to the ground, keeps right. the balance, keeps turning, keeps turning. Completely turned around there. What I'm surprised he didn't run the wrong way. <laughs> 57 say, yards. You know, he felt awfully confident that he was going to be able to do it yesterday when he was open him and uh, he delivers today. And he regained the momentum. Right now. Well, it's not bragging if you can do it. No, absolutely. Again, just a strong run. He started his college career at JC in, in Northern California as a running back. And he looked like one here. Then he went on to become an outstanding defensive back and now a great two-way player in the arena football league. A little chest-pounding run from Lincoln Dupree. That's a heck of a play. He's made him on offense, defense, special teams, really emerging. Another one of those emerging players is Richmond Flowers, Cosmo DiMatteo, that Todd Shell has. When he gets his, his old guys back that are, that are, you know, mending right now, Jermaine Miles and such, when he gets those guys back and these young guys keep playing well, they're going to be awfully tough toward the end of the season. But he's surrounded Garcia now with some excellent skill position oh, players. Oh, absolutely. Look at the kind of game that Richmond Flowers has had. Uh, Cosmo DiMatteo also emerging as a player. Lincoln Dupree, we've seen help him uh, the team a couple different ways. And, you know, no rest in this league. Ordinarily, you'd be signing autographs this time of the game. Which, instead, he's going down to cover on a kick. <laughs> Only if you had the pen in your sock. Indeed. Well, his mom called him Roadrunner because he was always moving around. Crawl with a kick, and Tolliver will take it off the net. And Tolliver's got a seam. Flag down. Outracing Crawl for the touchdown. He was just teasing Crawl there. You see that? He was just teasing the kicker. Well, we haven't seen back to back, have we? No, but the flag may uh, nullify this yeah. one. I don't know. There's a flag well, they're, they're menacingly on the turf. 16 kickoff return touchdowns in the first five weeks of really football. On the return, holding number 34 on the return team. Nope. That penalty is what? Half the distance to the goal line. First down. David White. Nullifies the Tolliver scamper for a score. You can see that one unfold almost perfectly. Boy, he just hit that seam and he was gone. And now it's time for the State Farm Drive summaries of the game. Well, New York got off to that great start, Tom. Touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. And then the interception, which Tampa Bay turned into a, a touchdown at the end. And they got three stops to begin, Tampa Bay, but finished strongly. O'Hara's pass through the hands of Tolliver incomplete. And we talked to T.T. Tolliver yesterday. For Twain, Twain Tolliver. And uh, you know, as a guy has an interesting career played in Hines Junior College in Jackson, Mississippi. And then he actually signed a professional football contract with the Canadian Football League, lost his uh, college eligibility. Things didn't work out in, in, uh, in Canada. Came down to Bethany Cookman, where he played basketball. O'Hara's pass. Franklin hits Tolliver hard. You know, the basketball player. Pretty good player at Bethune Cookman. You know, scored 22 points against Georgetown, 18 more against Florida. And he was just playing basketball, Tom.
hoping that somebody in the NFL would notice him. Grew up in uh, Daytona Beach. Daytona Mainland High School. So We're really, really fond of his mom, Mary, who talked to us yesterday, single parent. Uh, Mary works for uh, AT&T. She's an operator there. Most, you know, operators are anonymous, but not. she has always been a big part of TT's life, and he was telling us yesterday how much she means to him, how much he loves her. But, you know, he did get noticed as a basketball player. The On the offense, five-yard penalty, fourth half, this is the goal line, repeat third down. St. Louis Rams signed. Yeah, just wasn't, just wasn't the basketball team that noticed it. That's exactly <laughs> right. And then ultimately, he was on the practice squad of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, where then Tim Markham found him and signed him, and now in his third year, and Tim Markham was saying to us yesterday, has the ability to be one of the better two-way two players in this league as a receiver and then as a, a cornerback. Well, showed his versatility by playing college basketball. Well, he's a good much. football player. He just returned that kick for a touchdown, although it was called out. O'Hara from his own end zone has passed well short as he took a hit. In fact, uh, Dunbeatus Franklin was the closest to it, the defensive specialist of the Dragons. And then a good pressure again in the middle, number 72, Matt Steeple in there. Hutch and Richard Harris. Good push by Steeple and Hutch on the outside. How about Matt Steeple, number 72? Here's a guy that was born in Baltimore, and yet he is allergic to crab meat. I mean, that, that you call, talk about bad luck. Uh, punishment. It's like being from Idaho, he can't eat potatoes. This is fourth down. O'Hara has missed his first three passes. And a long pooch field goal at the live ball. Essentially a punt of yeah. punting allowed. And Dupree, don't pick it up. The dangerous Dupree tries to put a move on and oh. does. Dupree, another touchdown. Uh, they're going to call a hole. Harris, number 84, who was holding Jorge Diaz. That, that's a good call by the officials. I don't think uh, Harris really had to hold him because I think Dupree would have scored anyway. But Richard Harris, number 84 for the Dragons, did get a hold of number 64 for Tampa. This game is sort of starting, uh, or second half starting the way the game began. O'Hara rusty and New York dominating. There was no foul for holding on the play. The result of the play stands is touchdown. Wow. The wave off of the holding. Well, I tell you, Richard Harris did hold it. And it, again, it, 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 it's a pooch kick, if you will. And again, he only guaranteed one, but he delivered two. This is second. There's the hold, yeah, I think. Hold I think, and yeah, a takedown. Yeah, like. I, I think Richard Harris did, did hold them, but they well, give it to uh, the, the touchdown to the Dragons, and two for two for Lincoln Dupree this half. That was 38 yards. What about the move he put on Shane Stafford? Stafford, uh, the quarterback who lost his starting job this game, was the holder on the pooch kick, and Dupree put a move on him and just froze him in his tracks. Carl's extra point attempt hits the iron and bounds away. No good. But Lincoln Dupree guaranteed one return <laughs> touchdown. He's delivered two. Watch the move he puts on Stafford right here. Woo! Oh, no. Oh, my. And New York adding to its lead. The AFL on NBC next Sunday at a special time, noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. With round the clock service, you'll feel really good riding with Geico. Fifteen minutes could save you fifteen percent or more on car insurance. Mr. Goodwrench, who is this one and only GM expert? Can I help you? No, I'm good, thanks. Goodwrench, Goodwrench. He put a supercharger in your car. Yep, what'd you tell you, bud? Easy there, left foot. New transmission, who's my guy? Mr. Goodwrench. Fresh fuel filter? Mr. Goodwrench. <laughs> Mr. Goodwrench. Find Mr. Goodwrench at over 7,000 GM dealerships nationwide. My friends call me Buffalo. How come? Don't know. 
Very nice. Like all light beers, it's low in carbs. Unlike any other light beer, it's got the great taste of Bud Light. What we have here is a failure to compromise. NFL on NBC is brought to you by Bud Light, fresh, smooth, real, it's all here. And by GM Goodwrench, home of Mr. Goodwrench, the one and only GM expert. Tom Hammond, Pat Hayden, Lewis Johnson. Our producer, David Gibson. Director, John Gonzalez. St. Pete Times Forum, Tampa Bay area. Tampa Bay trailing New York 33-14 with Dupree. A kickoff return and a field goal return for touchdowns here in the second half. Tolliver had one, two for Tampa Bay, but it was called back by penalty. What a start to the second half Lincoln Dupree has had, right? It's a squid kick that Tolliver will take on the hop in his own end zone. Now Tolliver able to shake the first man to hit him, and then is swamped under at the five-yard line as Terrence Joseph got there first. You know, let's go back and take a look at that return by Lincoln Debris. Brilliant return, but I want you to watch number 84 right up here. See if he's holding him. He's got that left arm locked up, and then kind of the takedown. Official back here called it, or flag went down, but nonetheless, uh, Lincoln Debris has touched the ball now four times. He's caught one pass for touchdown. Remember, one kickoff, he didn't return. And then he's touched it on two kicks and returned both of those for score. That's a pretty good day for Lincoln Dupree. I thought this was an offensive <laughs> league. Zero yards <laughs> in the second half. Now he has some. There's the ball top three, but it was down. It'll be ruled down. A couple of big plays by Lincoln Dupree here, Al. What do you have in New York? Well, we have a game a lot like yours, Tom, and if ever there was someone appropriate for Tony Graziani to throw a 200th career touchdown pass to, it would be... That would be Chris Jackson, of course, and I love Graziani. He just keeps going for the throat every time. So it's 34-20. Tom, we send it back to you. All right, Al, where uh, it's 33-14 New York leading Tampa Bay here. Think about Tony Graziani here. From all those touchdown passes, he has yet to turn it over. I mean, and he gets hit so much. It just... His accuracy, to me, is remarkable. At O'Hara, going deep. They had wanted a flag for interference. As uh, Solomon has been held in check by the uh, New York defense today. You're right. Solomon's only caught two passes, no touchdowns. Remember, this is the lead, lead score. Defense, number 82, defensive twist. Five-yard penalty, automatic first down. It's our man Anthony Hutch, who's had a tough time in the penalty department. Anthony Hutch is, <laughs> must have a bullseye on his yeah. back. They, uh, they've gotten him several times today. The Dutch Hill's defense has really opened both halves very, very well. First half with three stops, played well again here, in stopping Tampa Bay, the first offensive series they had. First down Tampa Bay just across their own 20-yard line. They trail 33-14. Nine minutes to go, third quarter. Flag down again. At the free bite. New York is offside, but O'Hara's pass way over the head of Fundell. You know, Cliff Dale looked like he just kind of stopped running. And when you have those freebies, you just got to keep going and hope you make a miraculous catch. But I think Talanoa, number 90, was just was off, jumped a little quickly. Even though the ball is right in front of the formation on the defense, nose guard, the five-yard penalty, repeat first down. Yeah, that's Ken Talanoa. Log on to NBCSports.com for much more on the Arena Football League and Pat's expert analysis. NBCSports.com has all the information you need. You know, you're last, laughing less when you talk about me being an expert. <laughs> I, I appreciate that, Tom, as the year wears on. Thank you very much. Quotation <laughs> marks. <laughs> O'Hara pumps once his pass into the stands. And then he took an absolute shot in Pat O'Hara. Number 40, who gave him that shot, Josh White. And one, you know, the, the, the offensive line for Tampa Bay, they're, they're really good on defense, 
But sometimes they struggle protecting their quarterbacks, and he took it right in that right hand, that right wrist. Seven hits, four knockdowns. Take its toll over a 16 game season. Go! Second down pass from O'Hara, incomplete. Intended for Solomon. We were talking to Pat O'Hara yesterday, remember Tom? He was talking about the day before the Arena Bowl championship game last year. He was uh, at his home in Orlando and uh, up on a ladder, sweating uh, profusely, not expecting to play the next day in the championship game. Yeah, it was painting his, his, his wife had the dance studio. His wife, Billy, had the dance studio in Orlando, but he was painting for six hours up on a uh, ladder, not expecting to play. Then John Caleo gets hurt. He comes in and leads the uh, Tampa Bay Storm to a Arena Bowl win. Nice catch in traffic that time for Tampa Bay as O'Hara into the first half hitting seven of eight, but he's only two of seven here in the second half. You see he's taking a beating. Yeah, you see uh, he got that helmet on the hand earlier. We saw that, and now he's you know bleeding profusely. It happens to lots of quarterbacks. He had helmets and face masks. You know, he lives, you mentioned it, in Orlando. He commutes an hour and 40 minutes each way. Leaves Orlando in the morning at about 6 o'clock, he says, turns on the radio, a cup of coffee, likes the time to himself. And then, you know, they have a kind of early morning practice, gets his car, drives home, just in time to take care of his kids while his wife, Billy, goes to work at their dance studio. Last night, though, knowing he was getting the start today, he checked himself <laughs> into a hotel here in Tampa. Well, he's got two young kids at home, and that long drive, they can worry out. Saunders, who made that last catch, a little shaken up on the play, to the bench. First down, Storm on the running play to Solomon. Big old Tim McGill, number 91. When I say big, Tim's a big man. 6'3", 330 pounds, and we were talking yesterday to Tim about his flight down from New York to Tampa. And, you know, they fly commercially. And he's such a big guy, he can't sit on the aisle seat because the flight attendant then can't get the trays of you know, drinks <laughs> down the aisle. And he, he likes to, you see, he likes to be a weightlifter. But, you know, they have to, you know, the jaws of life have to actually get him out of that seat after the game. He just kind of pries into that window seat in the coach section. But he says he's a mama's boy. You know, he's quite his size. Grew up uh, in the shadows of Wrigley Field but never went to the game. Yeah, his high school, he's telling us yesterday, was just a mile away, or uh, just a block away, never went there. And talking about his mother yesterday, Jacqueline's her name, she says, you know, she's my hero, taught me never, never to give up. He also talked about his weight, I said, you know, what, you have a set weight? He goes, no, 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 I do not have a set weight. It, it varies. <laughs> Rarely does it go down, though. Now, now, what about his tattoos? Well, you know, he's actually got some tattoos, and uh, he went to the University of Illinois for, for a while, and he's got Chief Alinawek on both of those arms, but <laughs> maybe a little ink wasted because he only ended up staying at Illinois for three football games and left. Look at the size of that tattoo, too, all the pain that went into oh, it. Oh, my. And then after three games, he's out of he's the gone. campaign, huh? Unbelievable. Then, you know, then he kind of played in a uh, minor league football thing, and now he's playing real well here. Um, you know, Todd Schell was saying to us yesterday, he was saying that, you know, if he continues to develop, he's going to be one of the best nose tackles in this league and then can go on and play in the NFL where he wants to go. We talked about how strong he is. His hobby is weightlifting. I'd like to see him in a sumo wrestling match with his teammate, Jerry, <laughs> Jerry Sharp. Sharp. Yeah. Jerry Sharp, the sumo wrestler, and Tim McGill, the weightlifter, would be a, a heavyweight battle, wouldn't it? The, the holdup here is but they're looks like they're mm. repairing some equipment uh, on Kelvin Ingram. And on the Tampa Bay side, they're trying to stop the blood flow on O'Hara's hand. Now we're ready to go. Third down. Frustrated as a defensive specialist, 
and you take some chances, and they've paid off the last couple of weeks for Terrence Joseph. Fourth down for Tampa Bay. O'Hara's pass, wide open, no! No! Did not have control as he went out of the end zone. All by himself. All by himself, and, and, and it looked like he was expecting it over one shoulder. Pat O'Hara threw it over the outside shoulder. He tried to adjust, and Joseph took that chance and just fell down and almost made the recovery as he made the adjustment. So this is the guy who's been around this league a while, too. Generally makes those catches. One he should have caught, even though it was a tough adjustment. Should have been a touch. A New York stop. And the drag is up 33-14. Tough day for O'Hara. discovering a new way to protect their homes and families. Introducing Safe Watch Easy only from ADT. Now you can arm your system with just the turn of a key. And with no codes to enter, Safe Watch Easy virtually eliminates accidentally setting off your alarm. Now you may qualify to get an ADT system installed for zero down. Call 1-800-ADT-ASAP. ADT, always there. down at IHOP. Yeah. Right now at IHOP, it's stuffed French toast. Creamy on the inside and served with all your favorites. Everybody's packing in just to get a taste. IHOP, come hungry, leave happy. What's better than fantasy football? AFL fantasy football. More touchdowns. More yards. More excitement. Free salary cap football. Win cash prizes. AFLFantasy.com, powered by Sandbox Plus. Log on for registration and rules. Play AFL Fantasy Football. Check out Monday's edition of USA Today for complete coverage of the Arena Football League, including box scores, stats, league leaders, and more. Plus log on to AFLFantasy.com, powered by Sandbox, for complete AFL Fantasy stats. About 35,000 playing uh, AFL Fantasy Football still time to sign up. Including Pierre Moussa, our superb, superb production assistant. Indeed he is. He's the best. Go! First play from scrimmage for New York this half, though they've scored 13 points. Whoops. And the pass behind Will Holder incomplete. That's a play we haven't seen before. Will Holder is in motion there. They call that motion down motion. You just get the running start. They were trying to get him the ball right at the line of scrimmage him run after the catch. Now, Will Holder started the season, Tom. We saw him as a two-way player, play defense, play offense, play good special teams. But thought, they thought he was so valuable as an offensive player, they wanted him to play every single down on offense, so they moved him to offensive specialist, and boy, is he responded. Right on cue, Holder. Out of bounds, but he does have a first down. You can put your hand on the sideboard and still be in bounds, but your foot, if they touch the white sideline, which he did, you're out of bounds. Tied, tied for second in the league in receiving touchdowns. Yeah. And, you know, it would have been better because he started the year as a, as a two-way player, so they didn't play all the offensive yeah, snaps. He them, uh, but he is really a threat. They had that right foot. foot. Yeah. Good call by the officials. But uh, really, really coming on is Will Holder. And this is now that down motion. Just get that running start. And the screen. And it uh, didn't quite work because Josh White saw the ball sail over his head. It'll be second down and 10. Lawrence Samuels, number 22 for Tampa, just kind of read that perfectly. There's a guy who's played great defense, too. 18 career interceptions. Won this year. Real long wingspan. Remember last year we talked to Lawrence? We actually measured his wingspan. That's about seven feet. So he tips a lot of balls. 
very, very interesting guy is Lawrence Sanders. Smart guy, really loves this game. Played it well for 11 years. Garcia. Drills the pass. Talk for a short game. That was the strategy that Jim Morgan, Markham told us yesterday that he wanted to see the kind of throws Mirror see. Those short ones where you, you know, you throw it in front of the defenders, you, you tackle them after the catch, you don't let them throw too many deep balls. But Aaron Garcia has had an awfully nice day thus far. Nine completions, three of which have gone for touchdowns. That looks to Holder, who was hit immediately by Tremaine Jones, setting up a third down play.
offensive specialist in arena in the arena league. Freddie uh, spent four years with the uh, Eagles and then was out of football for three years, installing a propane line. <laughs> Tim Martin playing for everyone, isn't he?
Megan Dupree, his return ability. We also mentioned Corey Johnson has, has the AFL record of over 300 yards. He didn't get a clean catch off the net there, did he? Did not, and it made a difference. That's, I believe, the first kickoff by Black that has hit the net. The others have been short, including the one he returned for a touchdown. And, and now you see why you want to hit the net and how uh, critical it is. There's Richard Flowers back in the ball game. And in motion. Garcia passed and deflected and Flowers is not anyway. Don't forget that chip. <laughs> it works, indeed. Yeah, good concentration by Richard Flowers. You can just see, see his confidence just growing. He talked about those strong hands of his. He, uh, he has one, one slight superstition, always gets a new pair of gloves uh, before each game. They were very, very tacky. But before the game time, it's remarkable. He just kind of catches one-handed, you know, makes one-handed catches for about 15 minutes. It's really remarkable. It is. And, and, the and, game. and does it, rarely misses one. No. I mean, rarely well, it really does it well. Yeah, they don't bother. Tolliver over on the sideline. Put wrong with his helmet. Well, interesting, the Tampa Bay actually has run more total plays. They've rushed for more yards, passed for more, total yards are more, first downs are more, time of possession is greater, but they're down 33-21. Yeah. A lot of stops. A lot of stops by this Dragon defense. There are those numbers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a little bit like uh, when they played Philadelphia. Tampa Bay played Philadelphia. Same thing. They really kind of dominated the numbers, but it's those stops that are so critical. And New York started the game with three up uh, against Tampa Bay in this first half. They had another stop. So that man, Todd Shell, the defensive coordinator, is going to be thrilled with the way his team has played the last two years. The uh, last two weeks. Oliver's uh, helmet checks out. Hey, who's got a, had, has a helmet problem this year? Rodney Byler, the, the uh, fullback for the Dragons. He's gone through two helmets, two face masks, this guy, and three chin straps. Only the sixth game of the year. <laughs> Garcia chase.
You get flake-free, silky, smooth, touchably beautiful hair. It's come a long way from my father, shampoo. Head and shoulders, flake-free and silky smooth. Surprise yourself. State Farm is there. By the United States Army, an army of one. And by ADT, America's residential and commercial security leader. Call 1-800-ADT-ASAP. Tom Hammond, Pat Aiden, Lewis Johnson. Safety Times Forum, Tampa Bay, the defending Arena Bowl champions, trailing the New York Dragons 33-21 in a match of teams that came in with a record of two and three. O'Hara off his back foot, miss Solomon. Big old Anthony Hutch, number 82, forcing him to throw off that back foot. We've talked about it so many times. If you can't throw the, you know, accurately off balance in this league, you don't, you don't last long. But Anthony Hutch was right in the legs of the 6'5", Pat O'Hara, who has a lot of legs. When you're 6'5", you got a lot of, lot of legs, don't you? Uh, how do you know? Well, after his, his wife said, you know, we're in the <laughs> dance studio. Planet Dance in Orlando. <laughs> Get free lessons there and after that plug? <laughs> well, I need no. them. I tell you, I need some. Oh, oh. Sack. O'Hara down at the three-yard line. Well, Rodney Filo got a piece of him. Richard Harris got a piece of him. Ken Talanoa. Rodney Filer, number 34, we talked about going through two helmets, two face masks, three chin straps. He plays fullback and linebacker, and there's a lot of collision. Talanoa on, the, on his ankles, and Filer near the shoulder pads of Pat O'Hara. Ken hits five knockdowns, one sack now. And it's third down. And he's got Lawrence Samuels in motion on a post pattern. That's what he wants to throw. Finds a man wide open, and it's Tolliver. And Tolliver lowers his head, even though he was hit short of the first down. Backs his way out to midfield and has the first to gain it 21 before Don Vitas Franklin makes the tackle. You know, Matt O'Hara is getting these guys in and out of the huddle because they feel like they, they, they have changed the pace of this game with 950 remaining. But he's got some talented guys that he didn't necessarily have to throw the ball deep. Tolliver and Samuels and Freddie Selman are so good after the catch. Those control ones that he did just there, let him run. On the slant to the 20 yard line. Samuels with a catch, Joseph with a tackle. Poco, you heard it called. Right, yo yo, 82 Poco. I'm on, ready? The 80 is their three step drop. Poco is the, is the post corner option. Go you can go either way. <laughs> oh, here it goes to Tolliver who drops it. And the post corner is his first option to be taken away, which Terrence Joseph did, and he drops it down to Tolliver.
best running football team in the league, but Kim Martin's team has always been good at running the ball inside the box. Freddie, gotta have this. Quick right to Y, okay? Hey, 82. 82, Apparently, all right? Stepped right out of bounds before road. the fumble, or the ball went out of bounds. I didn't hear what right Pat Garvey said Time exactly, but... Yep. He's gonna have a quick pass to his Y receiver. Why is Freddie Solomon, the guy in motion now? White stepped out of bounds on the last play before the fumble, and Solomon takes it on the fly, and he's gonna be out of bounds, short of the goal line. Don't do this frame, but hit him hard against the sideboard.
nine minutes left. It's a good career for It is. Garcia's pass. Flag down. New York has had six possessions today, Pat. The first three all touchdowns and stops on the last three. Boy. Josh White, a holding penalty. Okay. 
Let's go. Okay. Fresh, smooth, real Bud Light. Is there a breeze in here? It's all here. Danics at the final round of the Honda Classic, where things have tightened up considerably. Davis Love the third a short time ago. His second shot at the par 5-6. The 5-iron from 198 yards reaches in two. Two-putt birdie from there. Love with two consecutive birdies to move to 10 under. And with 54-hole leader Todd Hamilton having bogey two of his first five holes, Love and Frederick Jakobsen have crept to within two. Golf coming up next. Back to Tom Hammond and football in Tampa Bay. All right, Dan, we'll be uh, joining you for the conclusion of the golf. Right now, we've got uh, an important fourth down coming up. New York facing a fourth down and one. Leading 33-28. Well, it sounded like a pass play. It didn't sound like they were going to run it, which is the right call when you have Aaron Garcia as your quarterback. player and you, you know and Todd Shell give him some credit you don't don't run it don't be, get too conservative give him the chance and then what can you say about Lincoln Dupree the kind of game he's had three touchdowns today I mean he's caught but he's only caught two passes both of which have gone for touchdowns by the way should they throw the ball <laughs> him more would you throw the ball him more and he's returned two kickoffs for touchdowns or kicks for touchdowns one was a missed field goal wow Fourth touchdown today for Lincoln Dupree. Two receiving, two returning. Well, take a look at this touchdown pass from Aaron Garcia to Lincoln Dupree. Wonderful for protection. Garcia read it very, very quickly. You know, one of the smartest quarterbacks in the league. Perfect throw away from the defender, the defensive specialist Ordway. And then a sharp cut and then good speed by Dupree, who's just been magnificent today. Boy. This Dragon team, the last two weeks, Tom, we've seen, you know, they, they won their first game, then they lost three. They have San Jose last, you know, last week, the hottest team in the league. Unbeaten, unbeaten. Right, yeah. And they find a way to beat them, and they get themselves back in the hunt, and then they come in Tampa Bay, defending Arena Bowl champions, and up 40 to 28 with 216 left because largely because of Aaron Garcia. And under Todd Shell, they play well on the road. In fact, yeah. so well that last week to try to recapture some of that togetherness they get when they take a road trip. He put them in a hotel in New York for a home game. Yeah. Paid off with a win over San Jose. And here they are right back leading at Tampa Bay on the road. They had won uh, seven in a row on the road before losing in Phoenix a couple of weeks ago. 90% completion last week, but you see the numbers today, a little under 50%. But that's because you play when you play Tampa Bay, you know you're going to get a lot of rush. And he's gotten it today. Time zone says that's 48%. Yeah, excellent time zone. That's our excellent statistician. <laughs> Paul Evans, nice to see you here on time this week, Paul. <laughs> he's good on percentages, <laughs> but the clock is... A... Well, spring forward. He's springing forward already. Crawl will kick off for New York. Tolliver off the net. Look out. Right into the back of his own blocker. And that's where the storm will take over. But first, let's check in with Al Trout. Hey, Tom, we have seen that Aaron Garcia touch pass before, and we see it an awful lot from Tony Graziani. In studio last week, you see the toughest throw in the league. It separates the great quarterback. He makes it perfectly to Chris Jackson. And in this particular case, the fans get to keep Chris Jackson. 48-33, L.A. up big. Back to you. I thought you had to throw the player back. <laughs> yeah, I didn't see him ever return there, did you? Go! O'Hara hits, he delivers, and complete. Samuels with a big catch in traffic, leaving to free. And Davidus Franklin then knocking down. You know, we talked about Aaron Garcia being clutch. How about Lawrence Samuels? Remember the arena bowl last year? A fourth and 15, and O'Hara to Samuels on a play like this for a touchdown. They got to seal the win for the storm. This is a gain of 26 yards. 
It'll be a first down Tampa Bay. We've got a timeout for the one minute warning. Dragons clinging to a 40, 28 lead. Look at the remote camera. It's a lot of work 
in the uh, college football season for ESPN, you know. After the slow start in each half, O'Hara has been productive. Tim Markham making the call to replace Shane Stafford with Pat O'Hara this week after Stafford had three passes intercepted for touchdowns in the loss at New Orleans. Dupree. They're expecting an onside kick. And it's a swift kick. And Corey Johnson falling on it and retaining possession for New York. Well, five point dragon lead is a flag down, I think, down there. Yeah, way back up. The way back up. Uh, goal line. Offside on the kicking team, number 65. Five-yard penalty added on to the end of the run. First down. And let's take a look now at our ADT oh. defensive play of the game. A lot of stops in this game, Tom. A lot of stops. A, little, a lot of hits there. That was won by Tremaine Jones. Right near the sideboards on offensive specialist Will Holder. Took him a while to get up. That's our ADT defensive play of the game. 46 seconds left. New York 40, Tampa Bay 35. And in the outdoor game, just take a knee. But you must advance the ball here in the last minute. Garcia for the end zone. Dupree unable to make the fingertip catch with Tremaine Jones defending. I'm surprised they didn't use a little bit of clock and force Tampa to try to use one of their three timeouts. Uh, Tremaine got a hand in there right, yo, yo. make sure that Dupree didn't come out with it. Under on one. Ready? Why yo-yo again? It's that motion you hear so much up and down. Yo-yo motion. Go! Oh, Penny. Penny. Oh. Dupree, there's a flag down. Intercepted. Yep. Penalty marker down, but... Oh. Intercepted. Wide open, just missed him that time. Orgway intercepted it, but the penalty markers came flying before the interception. Pass interference, offense, number 26. Penalty is five, result of the save, first down. So Will Holder called for the offensive interference. Might have been just one of those little pick plays. That's why Lincoln Dupree came so wide open. Both look. 
Oh, come on, ready? Okay, again, first, his first read, he's trying to hit Freddie Solomon, the wide receiver, the man in motion, Go, on the post pass. The other two guys run short routes, and he's not open. You know, Harris throws underneath, gets made by Tolliver, immediately knocked out of bounds by Corey Johnson, the game. Good defender as well. Terrence Joseph. Corner to Freddie, corner to Freddie, it's there. That last play just took four seconds. We're down to 16. Right yo-yo, run looks again on the outside. Right yo-yo, 82, wide corner, outside look. Come on, ready? Okay, again, he's trying to hit Freddie Solomon, the wide receiver, the man in motion on a corner route. These guys run short routes just like they did there. Go, right. They try to preserve their five-point lead. Just cut right underneath them. You see where those sideboards really come into play, making it a difficult throw for right, right, their receiver has to worry about. It. 82. Wide corner. Deep delay plan. I'm on. Ready? Okay, this time he's got, again, the wide corner. If he's not open, here's your man on the slant. That's Samuels, who's been so good on that route today. Well, we, we wanted to get after 
after him with the pressure. We knew if we put some pressure on him, he didn't have time to throw the football that we could hurt. We could get to him, make him, make him make some bad decisions. But I told him, this guy's a great football player, and if he's got time to throw the football, he'll get us, and that's what he did in the second half. Todd, Richmond Flowers, emerging star. Do we just erase the word emerging now? Yeah, I think so. You know, he's proven to be a player. He and Lincoln Dupree made some plays. The rookie yeah. guys have stepped up and made plays like veteran players. Todd, congratulations. Thanks, Liz. Okay, Todd. Todd's right. Flowers, three catches, two touchdowns. Dupree scored four touchdowns, but Terrence Joseph made two plays in the end zone to save the victory. Yeah, right at the end. You know, just bump and run coverage. It looked like it was going to be a great catch by Samuels. You have to have possession. I think Terrence Joseph kind of had just as much possession as Samuels did. And two plays in succession by Terrence Joseph. So, this New York Dragon team goes to three and three. And Coach Shell, who loves good defense, got it from his team today, and especially there. That's the way to finish the game! That is, Coach, that is! And it was the way to finish the game if you're a New York fan, as Terrence Joseph makes two clutch plays. Aaron Garcia today, four touchdown passes, had a couple picked off. Dupree, two touchdown returns and two touchdown receptions. And Flowers, three catches, two touchdowns. For Pat Hayden and Lewis Johnson, Tom Hammond saying so long from Tampa Bay. We now join final round coverage.